for me, uh, composing music is actually the, the same as photography or filmmaking, or poetry or painting, all the things I really like to do. The only thing that's different is the tool, because uh, it's all about emotions, it's all about telling a story, it's all about creating something from nothing. And the rest is the same, and the, the, the source is the same, and the purpose is also the same. So, I am composing music since I was 12, so that's 25 years now, yeah. It's a long time already. <laughs> uh, photography I'm doing now 12 years, so it's, uh, I'm doing music two times longer. But I had a trauma in my youth. Um, I was performing some music in my youth and uh, I was singing out loud the song of the Kelly family. <laughs> and with this I was bullied for a long time by two uh, boys from school. And since then, actually, I was afraid to uh, show the music from my heart. I did projects with friends and also some, some projects that made the top charge, but these were uh, real projects, actually. So these were not songs uh, that were based on my emotions. And uh, uh, yeah, it's different. So. My passion for music wasn't gone no it was actually very alive but i just used it on a different way uh, i used composing music with my piano to channel my emotions so uh, for example when my son was born or uh, the things i experienced during my charity work in africa uh, when i came back i really needed to sit behind the piano to channel all my emotions i recorded them uh, but when they were finished, the songs, then I put them in my drawer and uh, yeah, I actually didn't do anything anymore with it because for me it was done, you know, it was for me, it was channeling my emotions. You know, other people are going for boxing or they're going to a soccer match and shout at the referee. For me, this, this friend is my, my way to channel it. So Yeah, I'm doing this already for for over two decades so yeah there are a lot of songs already in my drawer <laughs> and they're getting dust but uh, a friend of mine once told me Adrian you are so egocentric <laughs> that you're keeping this this beautiful music only for yourself and uh, last year was a tough year uh, for everybody and I wasn't able to travel anymore for my photo shoots and also not for my charity work. So I had to think about something else. And then uh, I was thinking about my music. Uh, and then my wife, she asked me, Adrian, can you please make a CD with your piano music for me? So that was a good idea. So I made, I made a CD for her. But uh, yeah, showing the music, my wife is something different than showing the music to the world. So <laughs> that's a total different story. And I'm still afraid, yeah, but I have to do it. I had a few musical lessons, but it was uh, <laughs> not so much. I actually cannot read any sheet music. Uh, if somebody asked me to play C minor 7 or something like that, and then I have no idea which keys I have to press. But uh, yeah, I just put my fingers on the keys and it goes automatically. Um, this, yeah, this is how I do it. I don't know <laughs> if it's normal or not, but it works for me. So yeah. <laughs> for over 10 years now, I travel to Africa to do some charity work and I combined my photography, my film, my poetry and my music also into one book, a multimedia book called We Are Orange Babies and this was uh, my first step actually to show my music um, but it felt safe because it was uh, 
it was for a good cause. So I could integrate my music and I was thinking, oh, it's not, oh, it's, it's charity. <laughs> so <laughs> this was a good first step. And after the book, I also did some shows where I showed my photography. Uh, I told my stories and I also played some music. So, but the first thing I told the people <laughs> when, I, when I started to play was, okay, I cannot do this. I'm, not, I'm very bad in music, but it's for a good cause. And, uh, you know, you're already here, so you cannot run away anymore. So, <laughs> yeah, I uh, made jokes of it and it helped. But now it's for real. Yeah, it's for real. It's uh, nothing to hide anymore. It feels like uh, walking naked or something in the snow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have to do it. It's time. All my songs are recorded in the 432 hertz frequency. So it's a little bit different than uh, modern pop music. The Egyptians, for example, they tuned all their instruments to this frequency. But also great composers ages ago, uh, they composed their music in this frequency. And uh, for me, it feels uh, more natural, more how it should be. Uh, it feels more peaceful, more relaxing. Yeah, that's why I do it. I made a lot of songs, but uh, the first song that I'm going to release is uh, the song called uh, Birth. The song I wrote on the day, on the evening, uh, that my son was born. And you can probably imagine that the day that my son was born was quite e an emotional roller coaster. I still remember me sitting there in the waiting room, uh, waiting, hoping that everyone would be healthy, my wife, my child. Uh, and then I heard the first and the door opened and they brought him in the room and they did, started doing everything with him, you know, cleaning and uh, on, on his back to, to breathe and stuff. So whew, it, was a, it was a hell of a day. <laughs> no, it was a heaven of a day. Yeah, it was a heaven of a day. <laughs> And I still remember him holding in my hands for the first time and how he smelled. That was amazing, you know. <sighs> so when I came home that evening, I was tired, but I really needed to sit behind my piano to compose a song, put my fingers on the keys. And two hours went by and the song Birth was born actually, so yeah. And the song Birth is not only the birth of my son, but it's also symbolic, like the birth of my music, my piano music. So it's a big step for me. And I'm still, I'm still afraid, yes, to show this to the world, but it's time. Yeah, I have to do it.